Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very interesting problem. We have the absolute value of Z plus W equals absolute value of Z minus W. Under these conditions we're supposed to find the argument of Z minus the argument of W. Now this might look like a difficult problem but we're going to look at it from two different angles hopefully that will help you understand the context. First method, I'm going to replace z with a plus pi and w with c plus di. a plus pi is an important concept because it's the name of this channel, right? Now, if you add z and w, you get a plus c plus b plus di. And if you subtract them, you get a minus c plus b minus d as the imaginary part times i. Make sense? So that's how you add and subtract two complex numbers. You deal with the real part separately and the imaginary parts separately. Let's go ahead and use the definitions of absolute value to find expressions. First, we're going to find the absolute value of z plus w, which is the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared, right? And that equals the absolute value of z minus w squared, which is similarly a minus c squared plus b minus d squared, both under the radical. So we kind of got an expression like this, but can we simplify this? Absolutely. And we can actually square both sides, can't we? And that way we'll get rid of the uh, radicals. And remember, these are all real numbers. So we can just square them normal. And we're going to get a squared plus c squared plus 2ac. And then b squared plus d squared plus 2bd. And then we're going to get a squared plus c squared minus 2ac plus b squared plus d squared minus 2bd. Yeah, they're pretty much the same except we have some minus signs on the right hand side. Let's see what cancels out. A lot of things are supposed to cancel out. Take a look a squared, b squared, c squared, d squared, they're all going to cancel out, right? Great. We're not going to have any squares. And then we have the following left. 2ac plus 2bd equals negative 2ac minus 2bd. Let's bring those to, to the left-hand side. 2ac plus 2ac is going to be 4ac plus 2bd to be determined uh, plus 2bd. That's going to be 4bd equals 0. We can divide both sides by 4. That means AC plus BD is equal to 0. But wait a minute. What is that supposed to mean? Right? So let's write this a little differently. I want to write this as BD equals negative AC. And then I'm going to divide B by A. And I leave the negative sign with the C. And divide that by D. So it becomes B over A equals negative c over d. Now b over a has a meaning. Remember we said that okay let z equal a plus bi. So what does b over a give you? Yes if you said tangent you got it. So the tangent of argument of z is given by b over a. So we got that on the left hand side. But what negative c over d? If you think about w, it's c plus di. So its tangent is not going to be negative c over d. It's actually going to be positive d over c. But guess what? We can kind of write this as negative 1 over d over c and that'll do the trick. So let argument of z equal theta and argument of w equal alpha. Tangent theta is equal to b over a. We already talked about it. And tangent alpha is from here d over c, right? So, what does this give us? This gives us the following. Remember, we had b over a equals negative 1 over d over c. From here, we get tangent theta equals negative 1 over tangent alpha. Wow. What is that supposed to mean? 1 over tangent alpha is cotangent alpha. So, we can write this as tangent theta equals negative cotangent alpha. Great. And negative cotangent alpha can be written as tangent of pi over 2 plus alpha for two reasons. First, you need to change the name to tangent. 
or from tangent to cotangent. That's why you do need a cofunction. That's why you do need 3 uh, pi over 2 or pi over 2. And then you also need to negate it. So you need to send from the first to the second quadrant. And that can be done by the addition of pi over 2. So tangent pi over 2 plus alpha does both of these things. Make sense? Cool. Now we got this nice equality. Tangent theta is tangent pi over 2 plus alpha. And we can simply say that, hey, theta can be pi over 2 plus alpha. And we were looking for theta minus alpha, which is equal to pi over 2. And of course, you can switch them around and say, hey, the difference can also be negative pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. Anyways, hopefully you get the idea. This was the first method. It's a little bit brute forcey. Yes, we had to replace, but guess what? It almost always works. Replacing z with a plus b i and w with c plus t i gave us, and this also uses a lot of good trigonometry and some identities. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, which is geometric. So more visual. Yay. Now, think about the coordinate plane, the Argand plane. Is that what it's called? We have two complex numbers, and we can basically Think of complex numbers as vectors. So suppose this is my z, and this is w, OK? Doesn't matter, we're just, just general representation. Now, when you write these as vectors, the addition and subtraction can be easily defined. How? Well, if you kind of add these vectors end to end, kind of like move this z over here, kind of reflect it, whatever, or just shift it. And then add these, you're going to get the following. And that is going to be their sum. So you can kind of end where the z ends and then connect it here. This is going to give you their sum. So this is basically z plus w. OK, that's good. z plus w. And then let's use a different color and find z minus w. How do you find z minus w? So you can think of z minus w as follows. z minus w plus w is equal to z. So it's kind of like something that you add to w to get z. In this case, that would actually be, if you kind of think about it, uh, it would actually be this one. Make sense? So it's kind of like we need to turn this into a parallelogram. And these are going to be the diagonals. Make sense? The purple one and the green one. Now, what do you want? You want those lengths to be equal. Hmm, they don't look equal in this case, but here's what it means. The length of the pink vector is supposed to equal, supposed to equal the length of the green vector, which is the difference. How is that possible? Well, you're thinking about two diagonals being congruent. And when are the two diagonals congruent in a quadrilateral? If you said rectangle, yes. So we have a rectangle, meaning that this is supposed to be 90 degrees. It doesn't look like that, but when it is 90 degrees, guess what you're looking at? You're looking at two complex numbers that whose difference of arguments is equal to pi over 2. In other words, if you have a rectangle, then argument of z minus argument of w is plus minus pi over 2, because we don't know which one is going to be subtracted from which one. Make sense? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.